Hey guys, I'm John and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. I'm interrupting my normal stream of videos to bring you some really important scientific news today. For the first time ever, we have an actual image of a black hole, so you really won't want to miss this. We'll talk about what's important to know about this discovery, from the technology we developed, to the black hole we imaged, to the press release that announced the results, and why all of this is very important. Let's get started! Let's start by talking about the technology itself. It's called the Event Horizon Telescope. I'll leave a link in the description to the website that has all the detailed information on this technology. What it is is actually an array of telescopes on Earth that are extremely precisely calibrated and synchronized using atomic clocks. They all combine together to become equivalent to having a curved mirror the size of the entire Earth where everything focuses at a single point for sharp imaging. This is equivalent to getting a sharp image of an apple sitting on the surface of the moon, so it's much better than anything we previously had. The way it works is that the array of radio telescopes receives radio waves of a particular wavelength, converts the analog information to digital, produces extremely accurate timestamps on the data using atomic clocks, then saves the information on hard drives. Each telescope records about one petabyte of data per night spent observing, so that means we get several petabytes of data per night in total. This is way too much data for transferring over the internet, so instead the drives themselves had to be shipped on planes to the correlator. This introduced some delays because the South Pole telescope is closed during winter, which is April to October there. When the correlator receives the data, it can then start synchronizing all of the information and reduce the raw data to an image we can easily see and understand. This is a very long process, so the results we're seeing now were actually collected back in 2017. The first two black holes we're imaging are Sagittarius A at the center of our own galaxy and M87, which is one of the most massive galaxies with one of the most massive central black holes. While Sagittarius A is much closer to us, it's also much smaller and rotates much faster, so we're going with M87 for the very first image of a black hole. M87's supermassive black hole measures 40 billion kilometers in diameter, which is more than 3 million times the size of the Earth and larger than our entire solar system. It's located at about 53 million light years away in the Virgo constellation and has a mass of about 6.5 billion times the mass of our Sun. It has jets of plasma being ejected that extend at least 4900 light years, which is about 5% of our entire galaxy. No wonder this supermassive black hole has been named a monster by many scientists. So you may wonder at this point how it's possible to take an image of a black hole that traps light. It seems impossible. Well, in a way, it is. What we're actually imaging is the accretion disk, which is the cloud of gas that surrounds the black hole at the event horizon. Anything that gets past the event horizon will not be able to escape, including light. However, the gas at the event horizon, or right outside, is millions of degrees hot, so it emits radiation that's visible to us in different wavelengths. This gives us a clear outline of the black hole's shadow and event horizon, which is something we've never had before. Everything before this experiment that gives us information about black holes is by watching the behaviors of other celestial bodies around them. For example, a black hole swallowing a red giant, or other massive celestial bodies orbiting an invisible object, with a calculated mass that would have to be greater than a neutron star. So this experiment is a massive improvement on previous ones. But why is it this important? Well, the first thing is that this is an entirely new technology for space imaging that can really change the way we look at our universe. Another is that this puts Einstein's general relativity to the test yet again, so it could have revealed that Einstein was correct yet again, or that there's something missing that we have to figure out. This image can also tell us a lot more about the actual shape of this black hole and the shape of the bent space around it. We often imagine space as a two-dimensional object, like a trampoline, but space is actually three-dimensional, so the shape of the black hole and the gas around it could potentially bend space in crazy ways in three dimensions. So now let's look at the image itself that was released just this morning in a press conference. Here it is, the first ever image of a black hole taken by the Event Horizon Telescope. 
What a beautiful thing. What we're seeing here is the shadow at the center, which is the black hole, and all the gas around it that's glowing very brightly. We also see that the bottom is brighter than the top, which is an indication of its clockwise rotation from our point of view, but it's not sharp enough yet to calculate the exact rotation. This image matches remarkably well to our predictions using Einstein's general relativity, to the point that we can almost call it a perfect match. This includes the actual size of the black hole, the event horizon, the rotation, and the bending of light on its path toward us. So Einstein's theory of general relativity was proven to be correct once again, and is still going strong after over 100 years of experimentation that could never falsify his theory. Now we know that the underlying mathematics for general relativity is very accurate. This doesn't mean we'll never find that we're missing something, but if we ever do find this, we know as of today that we're not far off from the mark. As of right now though, none of the findings showed us that we were missing anything. They also recorded data for four different days and the resulting pictures were almost exactly the same. This gives us very high confidence that the process is accurate and that the data is good since different data sets gave us almost identical pictures as a result and as they should. Now this was the announcement of the breakthrough so there's still a few things to do at this point. We still have to explain exactly how the light is generated and we still have to map the exact behavior of the black hole and its rotation. Six papers are going to be released in a few days to cover all the discussions and show all the evidence. This will need to be subjected to peer review before it's completely accepted by the scientific community. This is a global partnership and global effort with complete transparency and that in itself is also a beautiful thing. This entire effort brought together about 200 scientists globally which were made up of astronomers, observers, theoreticians, and facilities. With this many scientists that are in on the experiment, the papers that will be published have already undergone quite a bit of scrutiny. So for right now, we'll just have to see if anyone can find a problem with any of the steps involved in the experiment. All of the data will also be made available to the public in a few days so that anyone in the world can verify the information if they want to. As for what's next, now that we have M87 mapped, the next step that will hopefully soon follow will be Sagittarius A in the middle of our own galaxy. As I said earlier, this will come with other challenges because of its fast spin, but there's always the possibility that it might also show us something unexpected. Other than that, it'll just be cool in general to know more about our own galaxy's supermassive black hole. As for the technology, it's also currently being improved to get even better resolution and quality for future images. Proposals are also being made to have telescopes in space so that we're not limited to only the size of the Earth. We're expecting that with all of these improvements, we'll be able to confirm even more of the science we're expecting to see, just like today. Not to mention that we're also hoping to discover things that are unexpected as well. Some could argue that these are the most interesting discoveries. Super strong gravity objects like black holes weren't accessible for direct experimentation before now. So this has an extremely high potential to result in more knowledge about our universe. Also, since we already have the data of polarized light coming from M87, we should learn about the magnetic field of the black hole pretty soon as well. So what do you think about the scientific breakthrough? What would you like to come out of this? Are you happy that Einstein was correct yet again? Let me know in the comments. You can also let me know if you have more questions about all this and I'll do my best to answer you. If you want more content just like this, be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to support the channel, you can visit my Patreon page for more information. For everything else, you can go to respectyourintellect.com and everything will be available there. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.